You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest, Senior Options Analyst and author of The Option Playbook. All right, guess what? It's FANG time. We got FANG earnings rocking and rolling this week. Uh, today, we started with Google, who announced last night. Oh, and by the way, I should let you know that we're taping Options Playbook Radio on April 29th, 2020. Uh, the markets are closed at this time, so we know what happened with Google earnings. Google is showing on the last trade, up. I'm going to round up, up $110, uh, trading at 1,342.18. But it did make a big down move the day before, so that kind of... Uh, tamed the move today. When you consider that, I think yesterday it was down about 40 uh, going into earnings, and now it's up at 110. So overall, uh, this entire week, we're going to have Facebook earnings. We're going to also have Amazon earnings, and we're going to have Apple earnings. So this is going to be a big driver of the markets. The Fed spoke today. The markets actually had an update today. So overall, things aren't looking as shabby as they did uh, even three weeks ago. The volatility is coming down, but we still have a lot of volatility. So normally when we talk about FANG earnings, a lot of times, specifically on Amazon, we've always talked about doing butterflies in Amazon. Some of them are skip strikes. There's quite a few Options Playbook radio episodes that are skip strike butterflies. And then there are also a lot around just normal butterflies. And part of the reason why is that Amazon always announces, well, I shouldn't say always, but most of the time they announce on Thursdays. And that means that in the options expiration cycle, you have one day for this very expensive stock and those option contracts to live, right? So they announce that earning. The implied volatility usually comes down after the earnings. And then on top of it, you have one huge day of time decay. So it makes it interesting to do those type of trades because the pumped up implied volatility from the earnings. But guess what? We now have implied volatility everywhere. So I would actually like to change it around because when we talk about options playbook radio, the biggest thing is we have over 40, I have over 40 different plays inside the options playbook. And I always want to look at different situations where different plays might, might work. And a lot of people sometimes will come and say, what's your favorite strategy? There isn't a favorite strategy. You have to look at what's going on in the marketplace and then apply the strategy based off of what you're seeing. That's always been my approach to trading options. So, this week, I wanted to come out and say, instead of going to the other end of the spectrum and talk about an Amazon butterfly or skip strike butterfly, let's look at Google, because Google already announced 
uh, already announced earnings, implied volatilities came down, but they still stayed really high. So to me, this is even a more interesting time to look at doing something like a skip strike butterfly in Google overall. So here's the, the trade that we're going to look at this week, and it is going to be a skip strike butterfly. And I'm just going to go out a little bit longer in time. So if I look at uh, Skip Strike Butterfly and Google, I'm going to go till June. I'm going to give it a little bit of upside. We had a 100-point move in the underlying stock uh, today. So let's go and look at uh, at least 100 points out. As a matter of fact, if I look at the June expiration date inside the uh, the Google chains, we see that June expiration. I'm going to there, there's a couple of them in June, but I'm going to try to stick with the actual monthly expiration in June. And because of that, we're going to go out uh, 51 days overall. So the June expiration is 51 days out. It's the June 19th. That's the third Friday. We see that the expected move is about 116% uh, trading at about a 28% implied volatility. So we still have a little bit of volatility in the marketplace. Uh, we don't want to run into earnings. We still think that there's a lot of volatility overall. So we're going to actually do a skip strike butterfly going out that far in time. And the, the strategy is going going to be more like an alternative to selling a credit spread. In other words, I might go on out and look at just selling a credit spread either on the downside or on the upside after earnings on these FANG stocks. And I don't think that that overall is a bad idea if we see implied volatility actually come in a little bit, but still stay stay high. And now we got the, the the earnings out of the way, and I would expect if if markets can stay a little bit stable, then implied volatility I would expect to drift lower. I think that's the p path of least resistant as opposed to higher. But we want to be protected just in case that implied volatility move is to the upside, and we get some of this volatile volatile times back. I mean, the VIX is still above thirty, and because of that, that still just implies that overall there's a lot of volatility in this marketplace. So here's what our trade's going to be. We're going to look at buying the June 19th expiration. We're going to buy the 1455 strike. We're then going to go 20 points out and sell two of the 1475 strikes. And then we're going to skip the 95 strike and we're going to go out and buy the 15, 1505 strike. 1505 strike. So we can get this entire trade done. Now, the markets are closed right now, but it's showing me for a net credit of 55 cents to the account. So it's important to me that I could find something where I gave some upside in a stock like Google, but I want to get this done for a net credit because ideally I'm just looking to uh, earn some income while I'm deciding when I want to start investing in these underlines. And maybe you do own Google. Maybe this could be something to enhance your position in Google or in some of the FANG stocks. So I like this kind of concept mainly because volatilities are high. We had a big news event that just happened in this underlying. We still got a lot of potential for volati volatility out there, uh, but the government has came back in and talked about uh, what they are doing to try to lift up the, the economy. They put a lot of stimulus in the marketplace. There's not as much uh, unknowns as far as what the government's willing to do to try to keep this economy running. The biggest unknown is when are they going to open up the economies. What, uh, a lot of people are expecting it to happen shorter in the short term as opposed to the long term. And it depends on each and every state. Are we going to have another uh, outbreak uh, in the coronavirus? Could that actually be, be something that we need to be concerned about? So overall, there's a lot more that we know now since we've gone through a Fed meeting, we've gone through a bunch of earnings than we did three weeks ago. So Let's do the skip strike butterfly in Google, and let's think about it in some other stocks that we like. Something, uh, if you want to continue with the FANG stocks, you could look at this in, in Facebook, you could listen in Apple. Now, these are not meant to be recommendations, as always with the Options Playbook Radio. We're just talking about a scenario that is the exact opposite of what we had probably the last time we talked about a skip strike butterfly in Amazon or in some of the FANG stocks, because... 
Now the volatility is there, and it's not outrageously high, but it's not outrageously low. So to me, this is a more interesting scenario than having the risk of an, of an actual earnings call and a forecast from the company. So here's where we're at. We're doing this entire trade. We're going to go once again, 51 days out in time, June 19th expiration, buy one of the 14.55 calls, sell two of the 14.75 calls, buy one of the 15.50 calls. That means we're going to embed a short credit spread inside our trade to pay for our normal butterfly. The short credit spread that we are embedding is caused by skipping the strike. We skipped the 14.95 strike and we went Went to the 1505 strike. So that's a 20 point wide credit spread that's paying for our butterfly. And so because of that, because of that, we can get this done for a net credit, but we're also going to have additional risk from 1495 to 1505. That's the range at expiration, right? If it went to 1505, we would be down that $20 or $2,000. That's going to be our, our total risk on this trade, but we're bringing in a net credit of 55 cents. All right, so if we do this trade, what's our outlook? <laughs> That's the ultimate goal here, right? What is our outlook for Google? Well, the biggest thing about this is that if the stock goes straight down and gives up that 110 points and it starts going south, well, that means – Ideally, as expiration approaches, all these option contracts will be slowly expiring and we'll be able to keep that net credit. So if it goes down, this doesn't hurt us. And we did fairly decent. It's not like we're not quite getting the same credit if we did not obviously pay for the butterfly. But we have uh, we're pulling in $55 minus the commission. That's the maximum that we can make, make the trade divided by the risk here, which is about $2,000. So we're looking at bringing – over 2%, almost 3%, 2.7% to be exact, um, on, 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 on our capital overall. And that would be over a 51-day period. So it's not that bad of a scenario. And I'm giving myself a little bit more upside. So if we're risking 2,000, we could actually make 2,000. Now, the odds of making the 2,000 uh, are very low because it means that Google would basically have to go out right at our short strike very close to the expiration date, which is uh, the short strike is 1475, and we're currently trading at uh, 1342. But if it landed somewhere in between there, we could have the potential to make anywhere from zero to two thousand dollars above and beyond the net credit that re that we received. So it's kind of a fear of missing out trade, which we've been that's kind of that's kind of been the theme uh, since the big downturn in the marketplace of uh, the FOMO. But if you have some underlyings that, that you are interested in that are FANG stocks, this is one way to do it. Re get a decent yield for the time period that you're looking at and allow you to participate in a rally in a stock like Google after they have announced earnings. All right. So um, I guess that pretty much sums it up for this week. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens next week. Maybe we'll look a little bit at the, what happens with Amazon going into earnings. Maybe you want to take this rationale and try to look at what a butterfly might be in Amazon way out of the money. Gosh, you could probably get uh, about three 300 points out of the money and, and still have viable option trades in Amazon based off of where the stock is at and where the volatility is at. So uh, the trade for the week, let's summarize it and then we'll call it a day. We're looking to buy one June 19th uh, 1455 strike call. We're going to sell two of the June 19th expiration 1475 calls and then buy one of the June 19th expiration 1505 calls. We're going to do this hopefully at the midpoint right now, a net credit of 55 cents. Never can guarantee that. The markets are closed right now, though, so the midpoint is probably our best bet to, to look at and examine risk. Our total risk of the trade would be $2,000 minus the $55 net credit that we received. And our maximum upside would be $2,000 plus the net credit received in this scenario or the $55. Don't forget to add in commissions.
And that's going to be it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, you can send them directly to me at theoptionsguy at invest.ally.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com.